Before we kick off our lock-in tournament, we wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the people who have been impacted by the series of earthquakes that happened last week across Turkey, Syria and its neighboring countries. With great sadness, we would also like to dedicate this moment to pay our respect to a member of the Riot Games community, Gazam Harmankaya, a professional Valorant player who sadly lost her life in the earthquakes. She was a trailblazer in women's esports in Turkey, playing for unknown pros in the Valorant Game Changers tournament and was a valued and respected member of the esports community. Our condolences and thoughts are with her family and friends and others who are currently in mourning. If you want to help support the humanitarian efforts, scan the QR code on screen for more information. Riot Games is working alongside local and global charities through the Riot Social Impact Fund to raise money for disaster relief. Let's show the strength of the Valorant community when it's needed most. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Valorant is back and we are kicking off the year with a bang! 32 teams will debut on the world stage and make their first steps towards a champion's run. Hello everyone and welcome to day one of Lock-In live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm your host, Ying Su, and joining me for the first big massive event of VCT of 2023, it is Mimi and Achilles. Welcome back, you guys. It's great to be here, always a pleasure. And uh, happy to be here for the start of this epic tournament. 32 teams, it's going to yeah. be wild. Start to the season and also our first time in Brazil. Finally a chance for the Brazilian fans to see some international competition in their home country. This event is going to be amazing. It is. We got a big event and a big desk as well. Very I lot. feel Huge. like there's a lot of space we have. For activities. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of space uh, we have to break down what's going to be happening because uh, you guys are home, I'm sure you know. But we are coming in with a lot of changes and a lot of new stuff, a lot of cool stuff as well. I think we got to break down the fact uh, that we are going to be playing this game game on the latest uh, patch of course a lot has changed uh, since champions it is going to be patch 6.02 and uh, i also got to say uh we have a chamber who was really really prominent last time is no more yeah they've done a pretty solid job at i think balancing out some of these agents you can see the pick rates here uh chamber was picked in the majority of matches at champions that's gone downhill since to zero percent at the most recent challenger split in north america and fade two who was so dominant has seen her pick decreased i think we're gonna get a lot more variety with these nerfs i'm so sad about chamber i myself you was a chamber be. abuser on the ladder and now i don't have him they, they, look what they did to my boy uh <laughs> but it was definitely a necessary change she was off the rails, out of control, uh, way too strong. So it's good to see. I'm actually kind of expecting a lot of the Pacific teams, particularly the Korean ones, to potentially bring out a bit more fade mm. as we get deeper into this tournament. So we'll see if that does come true. Yeah, I also heard that Pansy and Hypoc felt like they weren't casting enough overtimes. So Riot decided to bring Split back into the ah. pool. And uh, Seth, as you know, with Split, we might just be here in this tournament forever. We might be here in this tournament forever, but we also might have Zato winning it because we've got <laughs> Split back. I love this map. I think it's just, it's excellent to see it back into the pool. Out with a bind, in with a split, as uh, they always say. I'm So I'm excited to see it. That is the saying that a lot of people say very often. For decades. But this map, a couple little changes, but generally it's going to be pretty similar. I think it's just consistent with other changes that have already been made to Valorant, where it's simplifying geometry, cutting down on some of those weird 50-50s. I'm hoping that it'll make the map a little more balanced, even if it does play similarly to it used to. And i got to say, my favorite map of this map pool is the new one, and it is Lotus and Mimi, what a beautiful map. Yeah, it is a stunning one. And, and this one is fun. We have a crazy new gimmick with the spinning <laughs> doors. It's another three site map. And, and this is a map that we have not gotten to see really in top tier professional Valorant yet. This will be the first land debuting this map. And I'm so excited to see what these teams have cooked up. Yeah, I mean, you have all of the challenger leagues around the world basically playing on the older patch, still having Bind and Breeze in the pool. So we don't haven't been able to see that new split at the top level. We haven't been able to see Lotus. I, for one, have been really enjoying this when, I, when it does come up in my uh, just ladder 
ladder play. I love the three site maps, that and Haven, so I'm excited to see what the pros can do with it. And depends if what kind of pro you are. You might be a little bit uh, happy or upset with the stinger changes as well. Uh, the pew pew, Seth, is not pew pewing as much. Uh, this one, I smile. <laughs> I, uh, I'm very excited about this one uh, because the stinger out of control. If we could do something to the Odin next, that might be a, a good no, little adjustment. I know that Yinsu is not uh, on board with that. But yeah, stinger does get increased in cost by a 150. A little bit of change to the, the damage ranges and whatnot as well in there. Just a slight little nerf because it was getting out of hand with these force buys. Yeah, we very briefly had the bad times where it was economically viable to just buy stinger no armor after losing a round made it look like the previous Stinger meta, but thankfully that has been changed. So we should see a little bit more reasonable, uh, reasonable economic decision making. Bring back the Bucky meta. I no. like that meta. Nope. That was a fun time. You uh, are just the weirdest person. Yeah, I Odin's know. I like and Bucky's. On, like, I like to watch the world burn. Uh, but speaking of, speaking of a good time, we have some great players, uh, some new players coming to this tournament and some uh, returning players. And Seth, I'm going to give you the stage right off the bat to give me your player to watch. Mm. And uh, let me guess, is it a DRX player? Yeah, it absolutely he is a DRX player, and I think there's a couple different ones that you could go with, but it has to be the solid foundation for this team. It's Mako. The guy is an absolute god when it comes down to playing the controller role. We saw how pivotal he was to DRX's success, being able to break that fifth, sixth curse, make it into the third place spot at Champions. It was a lot of it on the back of this man right here. Yeah, this is the upward swing for DRX. Top three last time, they're one of those teams that has stuck together and kept the core of their roster pretty much the same. So it's going to be really exciting to see this guy back in action. Obviously, so many highlight clips at Champions, so many impactful clutches that made that run possible. Yeah, like you both said, this is a team that hasn't had to really deal with a sort of new players coming in, uh, get them to, to get more climatized. But there is a team that had to do that. But Mimi, I know your player to watch uh, is from the uh, the world champions of last year. Yeah, that it is. A man who is going to find himself at home here in Brazil. And that's no one but Aspas. This guy was insane in champions last year, having such incredible impact to win loud that tournament. He's one of the absolute best dive players, playing on the jet, playing on the race. And now we're in a meta where Chamber is pretty much gone, and it's really going to emphasize those players that can be flexible and slot into different roles uh, on that duelist side. And on top of that, he's playing in his home country, right? Yeah. We saw how much that charged up Alpha Air in Turkey. Now this guy is at home in Brazil. It, it's going to be electric when they do finally take the stage. Unfortunately, that's on Wednesday now, not today. But uh, when it does happen, it, it won't. It, the wait will have been worth it because the crowd is going to go absolutely crazy, and I'm, I'm hoping to see him go absolutely crazy as well in that lobby. Maybe not. We, you know, I'm, Genji's in there, so I'm a little of bit course, torn, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. I mean, can he do it back to back? That is the question here, but I want to throw out a name from the distance past, mm. a name that we did not mention at all at an international event in 2022, but he lifted a trophy in 2021 because uh, Nats is back, and I think this is one of the players that we're all very excited to see. He kind of pioneered the ratty plays, the lurks, the cypher, the viper, everything. He's an icon at this stage, and uh, do you guys think that he can keep that up? He can bring something new from the last time we saw him? It feels like the meta is right for him. With those chamber changes, a lot of players have been talking about how potent uh, Killjoy and Cypher are in this meta. Those are the roles where this guy thrived. Now he's coming back in on a team that just looks absolutely filled with all-stars. It's been way too long. Yeah, I, I mean, this was a guy who crawled so Mako could walk, and now I think that he's <laughs> back and he's ready to go into a full-blown sprint. So I'm really excited to see him on his return, and I, and I hope that with this meta behind him as well, we get those crazy performances that broke the hearts of so many other you know, fandoms out there because they were so dominant. I think it's going to happen. I feel like he's going to uh, pull out something that we maybe haven't seen before, but we shall see. As you guys know, we are in Sao Paulo. It is a little bit hot here, but I think it's time to turn the heat up in, uh, in uh -huh. overheating here. I want to hear you guys' hot takes before the tournament <laughs> has even started. We haven't seen a single map, but Mimi, give it to me. Pitch it to me. What is your hot take? That graphic doesn't seem safe. That's uh, uh, <laughs> There's way too much going on, but... I've got a good one for you. I've got a, a, a spicy, hot, warm take for you. And that's about a team that I think quite a few people have been sleeping on, and that is Evil Geniuses. I'm going to say something crazy. Mm. I think that this squad has a real chance of making it into top four. Last year in NA, start out in tier two, make their way into the VCT, make waves there, continue to innovate and build up young NA talent. Now coming into this year, they've made even more changes. They've added some experienced players. They've kept Had their a lot coach of that did so much. We'll just talk about the five. You know, they might have to <laughs> roll up in their clown car, but the core is the players that we want to focus on. I think the bracket is ripe for this team to make a run. 
Okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little bit of uh, the temperature rising, mm. but you got anything better, Seth? Oh yeah, I'm about to drop like the bomb hot sauce on you. Two teams from Korea are gonna be in the grand final. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be DRX, and I don't know who the hell the other one's gonna be. It, it's probably Gen G, I guess. Maybe T1. But it's gonna happen. It happened in League of Legends. This is a Riot game, so it's <laughs> destined to happen again here I don't at know this that's event. How it works. It, that's exactly how it works. The script writers they they use the same ones for this tournament. See, take means it's something you believe, and I don't know if you even believe that. Oh, I'm, I, I I'm do, all in. I'm off the goop. I gaming. do love. It's the first time you've been able to say that because it's the first time we've had more than one <laughs> Korean team at international tournament. Um, Huzzah! But uh, this is actually this, not true. We had four Q. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, this is not your typical VCT event with the restructure of the league. All of the new rosters, all of the teams are going to be here. We are here to showcase 32 teams from around the globe. Uh, check out this video that breaks all of it down. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tichinha, shoutcaster in VCT Brazil, and welcome to Lock King, the first global event of the new Valorant Champions Tour. Yeah! Over the next three weeks, 32 teams will battle through the biggest tournament in Valorant Esports history. Every team from the Americas, Pacific, and EMEA leagues will be in attendance, as well as two representatives from China. To secure victory, teams will have to battle through a gauntlet of matches where there will be no room for error. The concept is brutally simple. A single elimination bracket all the way to the top. Teams will be drawn and placed into two groups that will build each side of the 32-team bracket. It's best of three up into the final four and best of fives to close out the tournament. <laughs> That's it, you're not gonna want to miss a match. Well, as you guys just saw there, we're kicking off with the uh, first half of our teams here, the alpha stage, the alpha bracket. Of course, it's single elimination, you guys. So anything can happen, and I feel a couple of upsets coming. Yeah, it's this, about to happen. this is going to be a crazy one. You can see from our perfect circle here how this one is going to break down. Each of those arrows is a matchup that a team can win. It's single elim, you lose a BO3, you're out. You need a perfect run to win this event. That is so insanely difficult to do. Yeah, you got to work your way from the outside all the way into the bullseye, and uh, whoever can do it, Godspeed to them, because this is going to be grueling. Even for the best teams out there, the ones that we've seen dominate in the past, anything can happen in this format. You can get upset, and if that happens, you're going home. I'm pretty sure the last time that we saw a team do a perfect run, and the only time we've seen it at an international event, was Sentinels at Reykjavik, and the game has changed a whole lot since <laughs> Good then. long while ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they are on the other side of the bracket, so who knows? Who knows? Maybe we see them do it again. And speaking of the team that can do it again, this is it, guys. This is the part where we're going to get people on Twitter hella rolled up, because I want to Know who you think is going to take it all right now, right here, Seth. I'll start with you. You'll never guess what you're going to Yeah, any pick. guesses? Do you want to just move on? <laughs> CRX. I'm going with DRX, of course. They, ha they have <laughs> only added one player. They got Foxy9. The guy is a just absolute dynamite player when it comes down to the duelist role. Otherwise, they keep the same five together. They haven't undergone any really big shuffles or anything. So I think that with that strong core, they could be able to take this. They should be able to take this. Mm, all right, I respect that. Uh, you stick into your craft, you'll get it right eventually. But I'm going to predict uh, a team that I think has improved a lot during the offseason. That's 100 Thieves. They made a really solid run last year at Champions. In the offseason, they picked up Cryo, won that Red Bull event. I have a lot of faith in this team to do well. And I think the bracket looks right for them to maybe just win this one. Their bracket looks right for them. Yeah. Damn, Mimi, you got that's real faith. That is real faith. Now I'm gonna take a page out of Seth's book and just like keep going until I get it right. Fourth time lucky. Fourth time is the charm. It is paper regs, of course. A uh, shout out to all you paper boys and paper girls at home. We know that they're gonna take a trophy home this year, and I feel like it's gonna be this one. And I and I know both of you are gonna like heavily disagree with me, but you're gonna look stupid when it happens. It could uh, be anyone. It's single elimination. Hey. There's no way to know. Yeah, exactly. And it's probably gonna be paper regs. But I'm anyway, a Pacific guy now. So so if you want to go for a Pacific team, that's fine by me. Okay, we got this. There we go. We've got something going on. Uh, but you guys at home, actually, will also have a chance to vote in the poll for today. Who do you think uh, is going to be winning, securing even, their region extra spot at Masters Tokyo later this year? Uh, tell us if it's uh, Americas, Pacific, EMEA, or China in today's poll. Uh, go and vote, and we're probably going to reveal the results in a bit. Uh, I actually don't know which way this is going to go this time around. 
It's tough. I think probably America's are going to take the poll. It's America's because we have the NA fans and the Brazilian, and the Brazilian fans, fans and the Latam fans yeah. all combined into one mass now. It's EMEA was already course. together. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I feel like the Brazilian fans might push this over the edge. Yeah. I think you two might be right here. Uh, but I can't help but feel like, imagine if China could just do it here. It'd they have cool. two teams. They only have two. Everyone else has 10 teams in this tournament. It would be wild if I was wrong and it's actually two Chinese teams in the grand final <laughs> instead of two, <laughs> two Korean ones. But hey, I would welcome that reality. Open arms. Yeah. You know, that'd it, be great. It is doable. It is doable. doable. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break here, but when we come back, we're going to break down our first match of lock-in. It is NRG versus Koi. We'll see you in a bit. Day one of lock in from Sao Paulo. It's time to talk about our kickoff match between Koi and NRG. Now, coming to this tournament, there's a lot of new things. We don't know what is going to happen. New meta, new teams, new uh, new maps, and so on. And Koi, Mimi, is one of those teams. We don't know what is going to happen with them. Yeah, there's a lot of questions around this team. They've been kind of built off of the core of what used to be Guild last year, taking the leadership of Coldamenta and their coach Barbar and adding in one of their young players in Trex. But everyone else on this roster we haven't seen in a while. A yeah. former world champion and a former world finalist in Starkso and Shados and a really young brand new player with Wolfen. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Because aside from Wolfen, they're very much known quantities. Like you said, a former world champion, former finalist. There's a lot of experience on this team. But sometimes when you assemble parts this great, you can't quite put them together correctly. So I'm hoping to see that, they're, that they've been able to do that and that they can get Wolfen up to speed as well. Yeah, and we have not seen them play at all in the offseason. So this will be the very first match for this team in their form. Well, th this is the uh, the unknown uh, entity you guys have spoken of, but there's one thing that is known, and that is Koi Dementor. He rebranded, guys. If that's not a me joke. Uh, but when it comes to Koi Dementor, Mimi, look at this track record. Yeah, he has a fantastic record at leading teams to qualify to big international events and doing well in them. He won the European Masters way back in the day. He's brought a team to Berlin, brought a team to Copenhagen, and now he's doing the same here with Koi. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to dive in and see how this is going to go. Cause Coming into this, I've talked to a lot of players. Like, how do you think this matchup is going to fare? How do you think that Koi has gotten things together? And everyone's saying that they look incredibly good in scrims. And a lot of that has to be Cold Amenta being the cement to really bring this team together. Yeah, and I think it is kind of interesting to parallel the story because at Copenhagen, Trex was that brand new young player coming in. Koldo was trying to like get him into a place where he could compete well at that tournament. He popped off, did amazing. And now it's going to be the same thing here with Wolfen coming into his very first land. So I think a lot of pressure is on Kolda to mold these strong pieces into a great team. And sure. speaking of Kolda Menta, he is uh, with Shados and Brandon Saisho as well right now for a quick catch up before lock in. Check this out. Hey, Brandon Saisho here, joined by a couple of players from Koi. It is Shados and Kolda Menta joining us here for an interview. First of all, thank you very much for sitting down with us. And the first question that I want to ask you is, we saw a tweet right before the tournament began from Ibe, <laughs> boss, co-founder, you know, streamer extraordinaire, 
And uh, I've got a quote here. He said, warning. Caparina. <laughs> warning. Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have some reason to be worried about, you know, what, what you lot are going to be getting up to while you're here? I mean... No, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, actually, I think you heard me saying on a stream last night, because I was on the stream live with the Sergio Ferra, he's like one of the content creators for COID, saying that I, I tried the Caprini, but only once, you know? Right, right. I said it was pretty strong, and I think he heard it, <laughs> and that's why he, he, he said I want to try afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, he was, uh, he was very determined that you guys are going to be try hard in the practice, yeah. try hard when it comes out on stage. I saw your follow-up tweet as well saying, my boss is just my dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like a Spanish thing to say, you know? Like, he's, he's, my boss is like my boss, he's, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, my father, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was listening to a recent interview with Starzo, and he was explaining, this was a couple of weeks ago, that your team was still experimenting with what roles you were going to play, that kind of thing as well. Is this going to just end up being like a sub goal or a poll or something that you, you just come in, you roll the dice, see what happens with the roles? Or have you actually got them cemented heading into the event now? You want to answer? In my opinion, I cannot answer on this question because uh, <laughs> we will see on Sound Power if we playing good on these roles. We will keep this. If not, we will change. So. Right, mm. right. Because you do have a very flexible team as well. Yeah. Uh, almost every player on the team has played tons of different stuff. I mean, you yourself, Shadows, you played all mm -hmm. sorts from duelist to initiator and everything else. Yeah, yeah, I play on a lot of roles and I feel comfortable also. Um, when Barber invited me in team, he said you will play on agent. Would you like? So I like to play in this team and be part of it. Okay, so this is still just like a bit of an experimental period. You're using Brazil as a testing grounds, or you're just trying to hide stuff for your upcoming match. Well, I mean, since we only had one month, yeah. one month, uh, a couple of days uh, apart from that, like of practice. So it's yeah, kind of experimental, kind of already. I mean, let's say we already set some basics on, on certain maps and mm -hmm. others we're still experimenting. Let's say. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, Shados, I wanted to talk to you as well because it's been, I think, over a year since you played on the, the global stage mm -hmm. at a big tournament. Um, and now you're coming into this one, you know, it's, uh, it's the first time in a while, but it's also one of the biggest tournaments we've seen in, in Valorant, right? And the big difference is there's a big crowd behind us this time, right? When you guys won in, in 2020 in Berlin, um, it was a lot different. There, there was no crowd. How do you feel about, about that coming into lock-in? Do you feel like it's going to make a big difference for you? Uh, for me, I think it is not because uh, in previously game, in yeah. CSGO, I played uh, with crowd in a couple of tournaments, local tournaments, so yeah, yeah. I think it's fine for me. Nice, okay. Uh, and, I mean, you, you've got such a winning roster of players. You yourself, are, you won in Berlin, uh, called the mentor, you've won like the Masters EMEA way back when, and you know, the, the players on the team, you've all had various different parts of success. You've also been able to beat this NRG core whenever you've played against them, basically. Uh, so, what's the secret? What's the key in your head, called the mentor, as the IGL to winning this opening game? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this tournament, you know, like, no one really knows what the opponent is really going to show. So it's going to be harder because one of our strengths, I could say, is analyzing opponents, you know, knowing how they play and then from that, knowing how to adapt our style to theirs. So now might be different, but I heard they actually like, have like kind of like the same style or something. Mm. So I think it's 50-50 at this point. Uh, do you think it gives you a bit of an edge in the tournament? The fact that your roster is coming together, all different pieces, um, and, and you know, there's not not much footage really for, for any sort of team. Do you feel like that gives you an advantage in the, in the event? Probably, probably. Yeah. But like, I mean, they, I mean, there is a core though, like Barbar, Coach, Trace, sure, sure. me. So it's kind of like same style, but like with some new stuff. So. Well. Okay, all right, well. Yeah, well, we've managed to get zero secrets out of you. Still <laughs> no idea what roles you're going to be playing, but I'm excited to watch the opening game. I think it's still going to be a blast. And uh, you can keep your secrets close to your chest. Good luck in that game, and thank you yeah. for sitting down with thank us. You so thank much. you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, Josh and Brent, you tried your best. You tried your best. Now, I want to quickly address Shados real quick because I feel a little bit emotional. One of the Gambit boys returning to the stage, he was one of the most popular players, you know, not just in Europe, in, in the world as well. And Mimi, I know the roster, a lot of unknown, but he's won a trophy. Yeah, he has. And he was fantastic individually when he did that. It felt like they just kind of fell off a face of a cliff in 2022 during that mech era. But now, 
a good portion of that roster is back in action. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's just we know what these players are capable of. Can it all come together? We didn't garner too much from the interview just because they're <laughs> just being so tight-lipped tight -lipped about it. But we'll have to wait and see if they can put it up on stage. But for now, they're opposition and energy. Yeah, this is not the unknown anymore, Mimi. It's the return of Optic 2.0. Yes, that it is. But they've lost two players that I think a lot considered their two best. No more Marv or Ye for this roster. And that's really where the questions start with NRG. It's tough. I mean, losing Ye in pretty much any capacity sounds like a terrible situation for the side of energy, but getting Artis is about as close as a one-to-one -one replacement as you could possibly get. Artis was absolutely insane last year for FPX. His performances against some of the best teams in the world, he was always a constant, putting up aces, putting up some of the craziest clutches that we have ever seen in Valorant. So I still have to put a lot of stock in energy because their firepower, while they are lacking Marv, they are lacking Ye, it's still so strong. Yeah, I mean, we have to talk about this comparison of Ardis and Ye because FNS, in the press conference, he put a lot of that onto himself. He was like, we need to set Ardis up, but in the end, Mimi, uh, Ye, is he replaceable? I mean, Ye is irreplaceable, but when you can't replace something, you have to find the next best thing. You have to find something that can parallel that success. Ye and Ardis are not the same player. They don't play the same agents, the same style, but they are both world class individuals. They are both world class duelist players that can take over the server. So the biggest question for me is how is energy going to adapt? They built so much around Ye on his chamber, having Victor dive in to create space to give Ye those openings. Whereas Artis, with his time on FPX, he was way more flexible. He played so many different roles, but was very, very adept at all of them. Yeah, I'm curious if, if he's going to have to maintain that or if he is going to be slotted into, you know, basically a primary duelist position. Is he going to be running that? Do we get to see Victor shift his role or is it going to be changed up? Is Artis going to continue to play a bit more flexibly and, and stray away from being the duelist, being the die player? I'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, this team is no longer Optic. It has to be its new thing. And I think it's going to be a new kind of piece of proof for that core, for those leaders in, in, in Finesse and in Chet, that they can do it again. They were the best team of the pre-partnership era and now they have to almost start over from not quite scratch but just like a little pancake mix <laughs> <laughs> i mean they can do it again i think it really goes to uh how good the, the, the core of crashies victor and finesse really are uh but before the break we asked you guys at home which region you think will secure a spot at masters tokyo an extra spot even uh with a win here at the lock-in and the results are in and you guys picked drum roll oh it was america's so but, but just, wait, EMEA came third? Hey, look, we got a lot of countries now from Pacific that are joining in. There's a lot of fans Ooh. out there from regions like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, etc. So they're coming out, they're representing, that's good. But as we anticipated, the LATAM, the Brazilians, the Americas, it was, just, it was just too much. That's kind of what's exciting for me about like this new league format in general, is that all of these teams, all these kind of regions that were so fractured before are now like very much together into like one set of teams to cheer for. So it's going to be really exciting uh, to see that, especially with that big Pacific fan base. Yeah, I mean, shout out to the 1.8% of the people that voted China, because they're going to look really big brained if it does happen. Do That's a poll true. on Weibo and see, how, see what the results <laughs> look like. Yeah. It's going to be very, very <laughs> different there. Uh, but just before uh, we get into everything else, I want to quickly talk about this NRG versus Koi matchup again sure. because do you see it as of like a, a team that we know exactly what could happen versus a team that we literally don't have any opinions on? Or is there somewhere in between? I think there's about an equal amount of information on both these teams. They're both coming in with a core with leaders from a previous roster, but they've brought in a lot of new players that I think will fundamentally change the way that they are playing Valorant. Uh, on top of that, it is a brand new meta. I think anyone that is looking at that event, uh, at this event, looking at these teams and being like, hey, I know exactly how this is going to go. I know what's happening. Like, it, it's just foolish. These guys could all pull out anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that I give a bit more credit to the foundation that is there you know, coming over from Optic for Energy, sure. slotting in the firepower of artists. But at the same time, when you're going up against a team that you don't know much about, that you you see these players, you know what they're capable of, you see the accolades they have accumulated for themselves in the past, and then you don't really have that much of an info read as far as what they're going to be playing, what maps they want to go to, that can be that can always catch you off guard, and that can be enough to lose a series. More importantly, though, uh, will NRG be able to get over that uh, European yeah. team curse? Now they join <laughs> the artists. European player. I mean, there's a lot of curses working against them in this one. Not not only with the European teams that they've very much struggled against, but also first matches. This is a team that tends to struggle early, and also a team that normally has to put a lot, a lot of prep in. They've talked about that. They have minimal information, and that kind of makes them nervous. Well, it's time uh, to wrap this up. 
that, of course, we have a massive game coming up for you guys. It is NRG versus Koi. It's going to be kicking off the first event of VCT 2023. Of course, the largest Valorant tournament we have ever had. This is single elimination, do or die, and only one team can make a perfect run. Lock-in starts right here, right now. Let's go, baby! Essa cidade é irada. Eu acho que todos nós brasileiros temos uma boa reputação por sermos competitivos e apaixonados especialmente em esportes. Nós trazemos o mesmo espírito dos campos para os servers. Nós estamos super felizes de receber aqui o herói brasileiro Hit do MIBR no estúdio para falar um pouquinho sobre isso. Fala, Titinha, mano. Beleza? Ô, Hit, você deve estar muito empolgado pra jogar na frente de toda essa torcida, não é não? Pô, os fãs vão, vão ir à loucura e eu tenho certeza que, que a gente não vai desapontá-los. Então, esse ano, Loki Miriri.
região da China emerge aqui no Lokin, mirando o trono. Eu tô aqui com Ei. E aí, cara, como é que você se sente fazendo parte do VCT? A EMEA produziu o nosso primeiro campeonato do VCT. Eles são uma região com um legado completo dentro dos esportes. E o meu próximo convidado está bem acostumado com isso. Starkso, so you came out on top in 2021. What do you want to say to your opponents, new and old? In 2022, I didn't do as good as I expected. So in 2023, I'm really happy to get my revenge with our team. insane is that already one of these two teams will be going home. The format of this tournament is brutal and for these two squads, neither of them has any tape on their opponent. Neither of them can really expect what they're about to face in that server. And I mean, that's just going to be a recurring issue for pretty much all of the teams yeah. here. There's so few that have tape that you can really trust because there's been so many roster moves. But I love that. I, I love everything about this. The stage design, the wire frame, everybody's walking out together. It's absolutely wild. It's also great to see artists get a really big cheer for the Brazilian fans. So clearly has been turning heads across the world with some performances and he's going to be looking to do that again here today for energy. Yeah, I think a lot of the onus falls on artists. He is the guy they're looking for. You are replacing the guy that is considered the GOAT. Stepping into Ye's shoes is not an easy task. Yeah, it is not indeed. And of course, we already heard a little bit from FNS uh, that NRG, they rely on the heavy prep the preparation, and I wonder how this map veto is going to go when they have no idea what Koi could be pulling out. Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see. Both these teams, we have cores, they have maps they used to ban, but that wasn't really common for that old Optic core. Ascent will be gone first. 
Is that taken out? It's going to be Blitz. split. Okay. Wait, I'm so surprised about that. Yeah. Lotus is in. I don't think anyone is going to pick it, at least not for the opening match. But it would be wild if that does happen. I'm anticipating a second round ban. Oh, my goodness. NRG, you have picked Icebox. What is going on? Yeah. Okay, that's ba not expected. No, back in the optics times, they were not very good at no. this map. So they're kind of throwing a loop into this one. However, old NRG, the Som era NRG, actually really loved this map. And I think Som traditionally as a player has always performed really well on it. Man, he's got a lot of influence if he was able to swing them into Icebox just yeah. al alone. They haven't played this since July against FPX. So the last time they did play it, they were playing against Artis, and that's when Victor was trying to play Neon on Icebox. And it was it never go well. good. Yeah, it, was, it, 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 it never go well. went well. And Lotus so, is out. So we get means... Pearl. We're going to get Pearl, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that we will see a lot of teams taking the veto like Koi, where you're just getting rid of those two, I guess Split's not new, but the new ch newly added maps into the pool with Split and Lotus. It's going to be so difficult to have a full seven map pool heading into this tournament. The practice time just wasn't there for most of these teams. I mean, with single elimination, you don't need a seven map pool here, really, because you are not. You might not end up even playing that many maps here. I think it's smart they're avoiding the Lotus and Split here, but as we head into the Prime Gaming, Agent Select, as you guys mentioned, Optic, they tried everything on Icebox and nothing ever worked. I'm curious to see what they have to put together here. And also just, you know, what is artist going to be playing? Eyes are an artist right now. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to just wait Wolfen and see. Wolfen has gone in with the jet. Right. They put Wolfen okay. on the duel list. That is an interesting one to me. I think with this map, you're almost wow. always expecting Killjoy, Sova, Viper, and Sage. Those are just like the required agents. That fifth, you can kind of play whoever you want, whoever you're comfortable with. For Wolfen, that's the Jet with players like Starkso and Trex on the team. I don't think most of us saw that coming. And on the other side as well, it's actually going to be Artis playing on that Sage. Makes sense. He'll have the option to, to opt there on the defense if he wants. It's kind of a role you can do whatever you want on, as long as you're getting those plants down. But yeah, I mean, we're saying, is Artis going to be playing the Duelist? Is this going to be Victor? It's going to be nobody. So it, it, crazy to see, but there's a lot of control. There's a lot of tempo control that Energy can have with this comp. Yeah, for Energy, their opening match in Copenhagen, when they were Optic, they lost to the core of this squad. It could happen again, and that would mean they go home. Oh, some new stuff here, guys. I am so excited and also very excited to bring some familiar faces back uh, to you guys. It is, of course, Pansy and Hypox to take us through map one. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it has been way too long since we've seen this caliber of game. And right off the bat, Mike, I mean, this is going to be a single limb for one, and the pressure is on here. Let's talk. Let's go right into it, right? Let's talk the core <laughs> three, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's just get into it. If we look at these two teams, it's hard to not touch on NRG's core coming back into this, right? Yeah, I think you can't really ignore that at all. Just to touch on the veto as well, I'm glad please, actually please, there was some reaction to the Icebox coming yes. through. FNS, bit of a love-hate relationship with this map, but coming in with a super safe comp as well. Yes. Yeah. So curious about the application of Ardis coming into this, and we can, we can kind of delve into that a little yeah. later on if we do see a composition change as well. But this time. feels like a little bit of a, a, a safe start here for NRG maybe anticipating Koi pulling out some sort of, you know, wizardry to get things started in this series. And I think coming into this tournament, there's two ways to go about it. You play safe, you play to your strengths, you have the core three there, you play a safe composition, you run the maps, you know, which I think NRG is the best bet to go for. Or you go for curveballs, you go for surprises, you play cheese. I mean, on the flip side of that, we've got Wolfen coming out on the jet. Well, and again, with this composition, tested, there's Mike. not really a massive support system in place for him. So this is, I mean, you're throwing in at the deep end against a team like NRG. Huge. And you've got to step up here to be the jet here. Uh. Well, <laughs> we're starting 2023 off right. You know what? I missed you guys too. You put that up for us. Appreciate it. Let's get it right, though. We don't want any any issues when it's single limb, right? Dude. You don't want anything going wrong. <laughs> So let's, let's then kind of flip the scope, right? We kind of started with NRG, which I think is a fair assessment when we look at that roster. Some of them, of course, walking away in that, you know, podium position not too long ago, I, right? Hey, I mean, most people are going to look at this on paper as, you know, this is NRG's game to win, right? I and, think it's theirs uh, to lose. I, 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 literally, I was about to get <laughs> you there, really. Koi have the potential to cause a real upset here. Uh, but proactive beginnings. I love this mid walk coming out. The knife did connect as well, so a little bit of information. But do they expect an actual bit of presence off the back? They will be warded away for now, so they are going to have to somewhat reset here. Yeah, interesting that they follow through on that. Obviously, Shados' position key in terms of shutting that down. But already, a heavy lean towards B Four. here for NRG. Full faith in the singular player of FNS to kind of lock down that A site. Feels no pressure yet, so he's just fine. And they're going looking. Crash, he's getting curious. And the swing on the corner. Perfect. Warp on one, one trade down, back and forth. Trek stands for two, but quickly goes down. And it looks like NRG want to send a message early. 
And the timing on that was perfect. The flash comes through just as the orb drops from Som. See, Victor got to be careful here. The wide swing, Coldimenter isolates the first, but Som, good for the trade. Shados, yeah, Shados though, come on. find a response. That's a Killjoy 1v1 here. It's your dream come true, Mike. Old Tommy the Tumrek going to be coming up now. Spike is safe to get back in hand. That's fine. 35 seconds. Going to secure the flank, make sure nothing's there. He has no idea where FNS is for now. So he's going to try and play it smart and play it safe, but a fight is inevitable. And the angle for FNS. How deep does he clear on site here, though? That's the question, isn't it? A quick glance to the shots, good Shados! A slap back to NRG. And a reminder that as much as, yes, the core of NRG has got champions, so does Koi. Yeah. A fantastic round from NRG. Honestly, the early exploration towards mid. They don't like overstep that. the mark there, but it's the timing for me. That poison orb up just draining time, uh, forcing Koi to sit there, really. And it would be a massive overextension yeah. to, to force their way past that. But immediately, as soon as that poison orb cooldown is coming in, there's three people to come through. Swing on the back of that flash, perfectly executed. But unfortunately, Koi, good for the trades. Yeah, Trex was a bit of a superstar in that as well, kind of keeping them relevant in that fight that was happening on that four-play stack towards B. So right back into the round, we're looking at the purchase coming out from NRG. It's it's very limited. So again, looking at the silver linings, we're looking at orbs, we're looking at any kills, anything they can build up into this. It won't be too much to write home about. And the stack slowly working its way back around towards this B site. So again, for Koi, keeping them cool. A player like Wolfen needs to get comf comfortable on the stage. We haven't seen much from him in the past to this caliber. This is going to be a very big game to start on but he's surrounded by some very experienced players. A couple of Cobra frags here. They'll definitely be the star he'll be looking for, but Koi nice. once again looking to plant the seeds of emphasis towards the B site. Obviously with Sages on both sides of this map here. Nothing spotted out with the Aldo here. I'm not sure actually if top site was spotted there. It was Crashies up there. The wall's going to go up. We're going to try and get a bit of a deeper plant here, but it's dealt with immediately. Yeah, very quickly. Now, Trex again, still going to be good for it, finding crashes. Second bite of the cherry for the plant. That's going to go down uncontested. So safe plant here, and now into the post plant. A little bit of chip damage on Victor, but let's see if any damage could be found. There's no flank coming into place. Still going to have the turret keeping watch onto that, so no worries there. They just need to try and keep this one as safe as they can. Have the rifles. This shouldn't be a problem here, Mike. No, definitely not. Should be a oh, comfortable oh, oh, oh. cleanup as well. Shade us to Shados. find three Ooh. Trex will find the final kill for the Prime Gaming Flawless here in round two. Now you come into this round, whether or not Koi will try and throw something, a little bit of a pace change here, but try and enable Wolfen early on in this half. But the things I'm looking forward to really is how they're going to test this Killjoy setup on the side of NRG. Even though FNS is going to show a little bit of variety here. I, I'm considering the conditioning now, right? We've only seen these B hits coming through. Exactly, They've been yeah. relatively all in. There hasn't been that presence here. They did knife and they did walk mid, but they didn't explore beyond first that. First buy so. round's too early to force the adjustment from Absolutely. NRG just yet. So. Absolutely. That will be in the back of their mind, though, I'm certain. And let's see what Wolfen get up to here. Proactive beginnings and a quick Tarrant start. dealt with immediately. That's, that's literally big tick in the box for me at the start of this round. Flash does actually catch the hardest, but look how aggressive this is. Looking to flash all the way into spawn here outside B. In the talk back of that information, Artis will throw the wall up. Yeah, talk about trying to bring Artis into play. That is something I want to keep my eye on, is how well do they make this man work. As I said, still sticking around here, not going to back away from this. He does have Victor not far behind. He's actually got the rotate coming through from Crashies as well. These two are rabid in approach. They, they Chomping at the bit. There's three what, people here they're, for They're NRG. willing to brawl. This is ridiculous, considering 0-2 down in this. Not, not a terrible start, but, you know, still willing to battle this out. And they did great chip damage on towards Cold Mentor, so that could be something to note in the future. But again, you still have Sage there, so should be brought back up nice and quick. But Ardis gets punished by Wolf and exploring on his own. No utility to tempt emotion, but it's Victor to quickly quell that. Falling away towards the site, but Koi won in. Unfortunately, 26 HP on Victor, nearly caught off guard there. NRG have to try and find a response to this. Actually, the wall comes up. Nobody's swinging on the back of it, but actually the oh. lockdown invested here will clear some space, but Snowman's still playable here for NRG. Should at least guarantee the plant, though. Oh, Stuff's is in trouble. Needs to be really careful about this. They're taking a fair amount of chip damage for themselves, but should have enough time off the back of the KJ ult to at least get the plant down. But how safe are they on the fallback? Actually made it safely yeah, post plant too. Yeah, all four very surprising. Well, no snake bites available, and I don't think actually any nano swarms on this, so it's going to be a dry post plant here for Koi. Around Koi. the world. 
Keep your eyes on who is it? Starks are going walkabouts. He's going late flank through middle. Hasn't been noted. <gasps> Victor oh, just Victor, gave it up. He it. spotted him. He's, uh, Victor is in so much danger. Now there's a problem though, because they've got their mind split in two places and Trek starts farming. Three huge kills and NRG left in tatters. Victor's eyes turn towards middle and it's all but a ruse. It's all but a distraction. The time is just singing him the way out of this round. Cold Amenta to close and Koi off to the perfect start, 3-0. Big conversion here for Koi in round three. And again, this is on the back Four of NRG life. looking to really flex out on B main. Get aggressive. Like hyper aggressive yeah. against three Spectres. Uh, again, Koi <laughs> weren't even really happy to entertain it at first, but they waited out that wave of utility as Wolfen to actually find the opener onto Ardis. Beautiful round from Koi. And this is the thing with Cold Amenta. He's not afraid to let that clock burn, let it go all the way down, force so much utility out. We saw that time and time again from him last year. And how many times have I told, you know, talked about Cold Amenta as a kingmaker, right? He knows how to make his players work for him. We're seeing it with Trex early on. Wolfen want to see how he warms into this. And we're finally seeing a little bit of a look towards the A site here. So again, the purchase from NRG is poor. So it's not going to be one of those rounds that we're going to be writing home about if all goes to plan. But it's the first time Koi's starting to explore the map this time. The scope in the hands of Som, who left to anchor towards Snowman, but three pistols to deal with here. Oh, that actually Shadows just staring off Victor. Victor here. And actually, Victor looking to get aggressive, nearly catching one. Yeah, but the pressure's coming now. Shados cracks open towards Crashies too. Potential of a flank, but not going to be explored. And they're on towards the site, already clearing towards 410. Dark so towards Ardis. It's yeah. clean so far. Nice. No, no trades coming back in. You can see FS trying to find that space. Denied quickly. Koi, super diligent. Super clean, super diligent. And a prime gaming flawless here, Mike. Another, a second. I, now, and we're in round five, or coming into round five now. Now, it's it's early days still. When do they hit the button for a timeout for me, if you are NRG? Because you don't want this to spiral. You've got another bite here with a full purchase. Maybe run this one, but surely that well, consideration will be here soon. It's Enemy definitely remaining. after this buy round for me, yeah. but if we do see any sort of adaptation come through. But Koi definitely in the driving seat in terms of the pacing here, in terms of the control. Absolutely. Energy just about coming up towards this first ult cycle. And I mean, two is the most kills here on the board for NRG. Again, early dealing with the turret once again, creating a gap, forcing this rotation out. I think Koi gonna very, quickly drift towards A here. And last time around they did this, they did eventually kind of explore that B side, that, that late lurk through middle, they kind well, of... I think this is what previously prompted that aggression Correct. towards B main for NRG, so we well, get a different look from NRG this time, but also a different response from Koi. And look at Wolfen, I think you're absolutely on the money with that consideration. He's already sat back there making sure that doesn't happen. So they are trying to find information here, but again, a new look from Koi going to go towards the A site. So a little bit of a switch up, but no pace behind this. Maybe wait and see if that flex does come through. Let's see, Crashes should have his recon back online now. Yeah, and he's actually just sent it out immediately. Now, if that pings, nothing. Which actually looks like everybody from Koi has avoided that. Do they rotate? Do they, do they sit deeper? What? I'm looking at FNS trying to find a bit of information as well. I think this is going to be quite telling. Nothing should Contact. hit these steps though. It's oh. huge. What a swing from Wolfen as well. You felt as though Artis was good for that crash. He's still standing. Don't know how. The absolute flood of utility on the side is going to put him right under pressure. The flank is on though. Koi not feeling comfortable just yet. They want another pick, but you can see them halting for a second, pausing for composure. See if there's any oversteps, and no one is so far. They've got bodies on the line here to try and defend. That's the Al drone. Late investment here. How is Crashies alive? Utility to clear Crashies. Ten, ten seconds. They've got to make a move towards the site. It's Soma Vector saving NRG in this. Oof. Yeah, a little frantic there on the defense and on the attack as well. But I think just an inabil inability to follow up on that first kill to Ardis. Crashies just tucked in for so long. I think initially a slow orb sent his way, but... After that, a snake bite to follow up. It was. It seemed a little hesitant on the side of Koi when they actually had the upper hand there. As soon as Ardis falls, he's invested the wall. J just follow through on that. Yeah, credit to Crashies for playing his life so well, but you're absolutely right. There wasn't as much kind of pressure right towards him. Yes, I guess the flank did come in roughly around that time, so a little bit of a stress across the board. But a 4-1, to one, we finally have NRG fighting back into this. Let's see what the new look coming out from the attacking side of Koi is going to be this time. And Crashies and Victor. Ultimates online, Sol and Ardis just one away from the Res and the Vipers pit. Blade Storm available here for Wolfen. Actually, Stars are going to get his Res online as well. Spread pretty thin once again for Koi in the early round. 
No exploration from NRG either. <laughs> Crash, he's looking a little bored there. <laughs> Hands off the keyboard. Just jump spot in boiler right now. In the second leg, really, we've seen Wolfen deal with that turret early on a couple of times, but there hasn't been a single round when this alarm bot's been pressured yet. That's one thing that's going to be the key part of this Killjoy setup. Once again, Ardis and Crashies potentially going to be tested here on A site. Victor drifting this way as well. Such close contact as well. That's the first bit of utility fully invested, and they're already on the site essentially. Really sitting deep now, NLG. Didn't want to take that risk after Ardis lost his head in just that prior round, but still. One going to come through, and Shrex on guard duty takes down Victor. Victor. Rashi's with a whole lot of info, but not a lot of ability to really do much about the pressure coming on off the back of it. So again, spamming in. Ardis takes a little bit of damage himself. And they're looking for that first step in on this retake, and it may be off the back of this Hunter's Fury coming through, and it absolutely may be now. Trax goes down. But not before he actually managed to convert onto Victor. The oh, timing, no. Epines! He's made a bit of a meal of it. This could be deadly now. Problems are plenty, Mike. Does find it though. Cold Mentor will fall here. FNS, can he find anything else? No. Starzo deals with it. Trax finds a follow up. Wolf's still available for Ardis, but. Man, there's just not enough left to fight the numbers of Koi on the site here. Again, seemed like almost a dry run of the previous round, but a much deeper setup here with Crashies basically playing off that Hunter's Fury. Victor gets here just as he pops the old command. The wall's already up. Starzo's already got that wall against screen, so there's no threat to sight. A little strange to watch that. Again, this is no pressure elsewhere on the map. This time the turret wasn't dealt with in Kitchen. There wasn't really any indicators of presence anywhere else for NRG. Felt a little scrambled on the way back in there. And I, I'm happy to see a timeout called now because I think we want to bring into context that I, there's only so many like, time, times we can say this single limb, of course, but this is also NRG's map choice. So if you're looking at it this way, I was really looking at kind of Koi coming in, looking really well drilled, looking like got a really good like, game plan into this. Maybe not completely anti strategy because you simply can't do that these days, at least yet. But again, nice game plan on approach. NRG are yet to really find that answer, to really find the information early Which on, or pressure anything as to what's going on. Yes, yeah, the point where we come back to that, it, and again, kind of weak way to look at it, but it's at face value, right? This this core for NRG, and again, whether we're going to make another argument about the comp or what, whether or not, I don't know, for me, the, the support system here, you can put artists on anything, really, and they'll deliver. Yes. But, but for me, it needs to be Victor and Crashies to step up in some of these rounds, and early on, we saw them they're kind of posturing up, looking hyper aggressive in that that anti eco actually. Yes. And there's three specters on the yeah, board, happy to brawl on B main. But outside that, whether or not it's just the, the, how delicate the economy's been, they haven't felt comfortable to do that. Mm. Koi aren't really making any secrets about what's going on in the early round, right? So it's a couple of times now. Wolfen's dashed up onto the top tube, dealt with the turret, immediately peel back to a default, and, and just kind of slowly drift towards A. If that continues, I want to see NRG take the initiative. But it's it's difficult when you don't have the weapons to back that up. Yeah, it's just, you know, buy round. And without a duelist as well. Exactly. A, a duelist is the one that really they should be looking to enable in those sort of rounds. And as much as, yes, you can prop up certain players to play like it, the agent not there, going to be difficult. Trying to play bodyguard here for Victor. Does I think get, yeah, he did indeed get the old orb, so that's fine. FNS could be next on the chop block, and he is quite quick with it. Really clean work. I think this is a lot of credit going to Cold Adventure in my mind. Again, you've got a lot of untested talent, some talent who've been off almost for a year. You've got a lot of different factors to work into effective, but he's doing incredibly well with this roster so far. Crashes and some, again, looking for maybe some sort of chip damage, some sort of exit to any sort of damage they can achieve. That'll do. Uh, I'm going to take down one, but anything more starts to get almost impossible. The, the, the opening to some of these anti eco rounds from Koi have just been absolute perfection. There's been no real risk. Always stacked up in numbers, and Wolfen's been good for it so far, honestly. Yep, solid. They're building up a bit of a bankroll now as well. I think that's going to be even worse with four surviving here for Koi. They're sat very comfortably. And you look at NRG, it's odds and ends left behind this. Viper's bit, mm -hmm. Rez, locked down to play with here. But again, I'm just not seeing the numbers on the side of NRG to really feel comfortable about the home stretch of this half. No, and, and it could turn on this round. This is what it kind of is a pivot point in the in the game for me, or at least in this half. Uh, it does seem as though we're going to see a similar start as well. Eyes towards what Wolfen does here. Does he get you know, checked on this? Does he not? Similar scenes. Uh, no turret this time. So again, this could be relatively telling as well that there is an adjustment for Wolfen. Big pick. Victor goes down. He gets a back away, and there's no trade. There is no threat. I love the reaction here. It, it's such a big indicator that the turret's not there. There's some kind of adjustment on the side what's, of NRG. What's been exactly what's happening differently here? 
beautiful opener from Wolfram once again. That's really nice to see. Again, young player, good decision making coming in here. First on the big stages like this. That's lovely. Doesn't have to get too flashy with it, can just do his role. And we've got that slow lean actually towards B, but we do still see Piper's pit and play. Still got a drone, still got the recon to deal with. Some should they force oh, in. Up. And Shados on uh, guard duty, tried quickly handling business, and Arnis even gets tagged in this. So they've lost even more. Yes, Cold Dementor goes down, but still, it's just FNS, Som, and Ardis to try and quickly get back towards the A site. All drawn towards B, all drawn towards mid, and a quick read and a correct decision from Koi to instantly open. go towards A. Yeah, wide beautiful, open. beautiful decision making. Be a very safe plant as well with no pressure coming back through on site. FNS okay. actually going to invest the lockdown here with the Hunter's Fury being burnt up from Trex. We'll see really what it buys. Again, when they're not behind screens, it only no really gives them access either. towards the orb. You can see where it cuts off here. And it's a safe plant. It's Okay, what's the plan here? Oh, this could be nice. Gives him a bit of cover. That's the only issue, though. Has to back away 18 HP, and he's lost all the bodies in the meantime, all alone, barely breathing. Artist would have to work miracles, and there are no miracles here for NRG. Koya 7-1 up. Let's pump the brakes here, Mike. Let's let's take a step back, right? As this tournament is going to be one of those that could be completely out of expectation. Very hard to consider who does deep runs, who's going where. But we have to give credit at 7-1 that Koi have come in looking dangerous, Mike. Absolutely. And NRG making a, a, a few decisions that just feel a little flustered. I mean, the res there, even if the Hunter's Fury wasn't a factor, right? This res is towards the bottom end of tube with no wall invested towards mid. I, I didn't actually see on the minimap if anybody had probed it anywhere else to, to kind of ensure that, but it's immediately punished. I mean, Artis gets tagged as well. Obviously got the heal behind that, but like I said, it's it's not often last year we'd ever talk about NRG, well, previously FNS, yes. making these kind of desperation calls. No, but I, I think this also then spins back, considering we are seeing a bit of a force up. Actually, so I'm going to connect one. So that's actually quite important. First time we're seeing Wolfen found without any trade or anything back. Maybe could do a bit more with this. But I think this arcs back to this is potentially NR's, NRG's game to lose to an extent. A lot more pressure, a lot more eyes on them. Koi, I think if you're part of the EMEA senior, watch these teams. You'll be very aware of who some of these players are. But oh, the tag actually comes not through. Not bad. He's, he's, he's putting in work. He's trying. But again, this is huge pressure on NRG, and Koi gets to come in and even determine the pace on the attacking side is very valuable in this. Yeah, big progress towards A here as well. Victor digging pretty deep here with Wolf and Fallen. Again, no progress through mid, actually. Crash is going to opt to rotate towards Orange here. How much longer can he actually, last? As I say that, yeah, Victor actually caught with the Stinger out oh. in the open. So, so much put towards just clearing him out of this. Actually, FNS! Great little available angle. The Oh, has come into play, and again, just putting bodies on the line here. Koi has once again won out the fight. Yes, it's sloppy, but it now probably 8-1. to one. It's not the end of the world, unless Victor can work out some sort of magic here. Well, he did get tagged up and noted by Trex as well, so down to 67 HP. Flashes to work with. The alarm bot will reveal his position. Going to need a miracle to get this one done. Still a drone to buy time yeah. as well. Shados working with it too. Beautiful. Two still alive. Trex, Shados move forward. Money's not an issue. Rounds on an issue. Koi are comfortable on the stage. Yeah. I mean, cool round 10, the nail in the coffin, honestly. With this bankroll that's built up here, Koi systematically working through these ultimates as well. NRG, a couple away. Crashes two off the Hunter's crew once again. Victor, one off the wow. null command. Yeah, got to say as well, for me, Trex and Shados, outstanding performance so far. Yes, Shados is 12 and 1. Yeah, what? Shados is having what? a game. And he had a you know, good beginning, you know, call it what you want, when they had the economy in their favor, but even into the buy round, it's been super influential. Early attempt, a little bit of a catch there towards the old orb, but again, just going to keep map control for now. But a massive rotation. You've got four players on A here. I feel a little bit like it's... Time for NRG to try and take a fight here. That might be why we see the numbers committed towards AR. It's actually with an op in hand. Could be big. You need something to make yeah. a difference. Yeah. Throw a spanner in the works. We know what he's capable of with this Christ. weapon. There's not many like him. The man he replaced is one of the only other few that you could argue. But again, three to nine quiet performance here so far. But not really an individual error, I feel. It's just game as it is 50 seconds now running down the clock quite low 
And they're going to be walking into a substantially larger amount of presence. First time we're going to see the four players really posted up on this two. Oh, this first contact wins that fight wall. Gets committed, doesn't get on it himself though, so has to peel away from this. And actually, an early read from NRG that this is going to be a rotation. 30 seconds. Left. I mean, 30 seconds left here. I don't think they're going to beat NRG to this side. Obviously, some tucked all the way into mm -hmm. Snowman. I love Victor backfilling this super quick as yeah, well. Immediately. Safety, make it sure it's not going to be a double pump, a double fake. No, it's going to be now red alert to Som. Do what you can, buy us time, buy any seconds you can. Plant's going to come in, does it get stuck here? 10 seconds now, it's down, it's safe. Into the post plant, crashes, handle Starzo. Now down to three players, what more can these three do? I think I heard the Vipers pick yeah, committed. Yeah, popped in. He's popped in, rightly so, but Victor on the flank. This was happening a long time ago. Odd oh, is still popping off shots, find Shados. Down to Golden Mentor and Trex here. Close on the side and Crash is trying to reveal him. Crash is going to get Trex and now just called a mentor and he's dealt with. Finally, NRG stem the bleeding. But is it too little and is it too late? I said for this to go in Koi's favor would have been the nail in the coffin for me. Again, it will be nothing short of a miracle. Yeah. They can close this out with the best possible result. It's a prime gaming flawless didn't for NRG like to get it. back on it. Definitely did it. So scrappy. Wow. And a timeout now for Koi. So maybe let that one breathe a little yeah, bit. Just, yeah, just let it settle. They're not under any pressure right now still. Not really any bad decision making on the side of Koi here. This just felt a little more of a, I guess, a preemptive rotation coming through and NRG happy to kind of commit to some of the information they do receive. Obviously with the Aldrone coming through, the knife actually falling through. I think pinging two from Victor. The Aldrone being there, they know it's three or four behind there. I think that's the point at which they say, yeah, let's commit to this. Ah, oh, this is posted up. Yeah. He wins those all days long. Like, yeah. If there's no flash to come over, to actually get Wolfen in a position to swing that, that, that's when you know, you, oh, this is always good for that one. Yeah, he's, he's not going to miss that, absolute sin. So, good to see him finding that and then knock on effect of it. Again, good stuff. I've got to say, the crowd here pretty lively already. It's a pretty small start to it. It's the you know, first game ever coming out here. Crowd's lively. I'm kind of liking it. Kind of liking it. Um, but all said and done, Koi now with their chance to maybe hit that adjustment. Now noting that Artis will probably have the operator still in play. That's going to be a factor. How do we approach this? How can we maybe facilitate Wolfen a little better in this scenario? Or do we look somewhere else? So again, they're being on the Sage. How kind of mobile is he going to be around Correct. the map? Seeing immediately him make his way towards <laughs> B. If he's going to become the B site anchor with this operator, it'll be a big switch up for NRG, enabling them to find something elsewhere on the map. You see Som making his way over. First time we've actually seen mid intention here from Koi. At least with a couple of bodies, it's usually Wolfen to just find that turret. A slow creep behind the orb. Yeah, they have not done this walk before at all. So the fight will be towards FNS, if anything three players there and uh, this hasn't happened yet He's this time is really full. uncomfortable now we'll get the early warning signal but beyond that it's we really on him here you can spam the wall off this alarm bar as well actually you see can see the really nano swarm on the other side of it they've got to be asking questions they've got to be that timing's starting to get curious here fns still steel focus he's gonna hear the steps here and now he's gonna see the players falls away from this pretty rightly Considered. Quick trade does take down Wolfen, but the site's now under scrutiny. We do note that, again, it was Artis who hit that early rotate towards the that B site, but the fight in the middle's won out by Starzo. And crashes on the quick flank. He's going to miss the vast majority. There's still one player even behind this Trex, waiting ever so patiently for his time. The plant comes in. The timing's atrocious. Trex gets it on a platter. Spotting out one in the second. Looking likely, Trex. Sharp as ever. And now it's just Artis, completely navigated around, didn't even get a chance into this round. I love that. How do we get around the up? Well, we just play it up I'd, the guts, I'd up love, middle. I'd love to accredit this towards the awareness of being, it's going to be on an extremity, right? Yeah. The weakness is going to be in mid. And what's FNS got to deal with is three bodies barreling into kitchen. He said, even here with the setup, they're stacked up as three, ready to so explode close. on the back of that alarm bot contact. What else will find a consolation, but only really revealing himself here prone to losing this now. Tracks on the first swing. And Shados picking up the slack elsewhere as well. Might even catch him. Gave it a good fight. Operator gone now. And the round back for Koi. Fantastic call from, I imagine, Coldement there. I feel like that's the first time we Straight saw them up the Straight out of the timeout. They knew Straight what they were doing. Straight out of the timeout. 
And, and it's not a bad call from NRG. By all accounts, you're only trying to play off of what you know and make that maybe that next step reading, you know, trying to you know, place him into middle somewhere. But again, it's Sage, not hyper mobile, not able to really get out of those scenarios. So again, you don't have that capability. So two to nine. Money, uh, it's missing bits and pieces here. You can see Victor without armor. You can see odds and ends lacking, but Artis does still have the operator. So this time around, what's the plan here? They desperately need this third. They really do. I don't feel comfortable about this second half at all. Three towards B main initially here for Koi. Called the mentor to be the fourth. Shados is going to be on crowd control elsewhere. Victor looks a little curious. Towards Nest at least on A site. A pause for thought here for Koi. Hunter's Fury available. Res available. The other side of things, FNS does have that lockdown and preemptively invested here with over a minute left on the clock just to force them back into spawn here as like I said it's it feels just a little desperate don't really secure the space on the back of that um yeah I'm really not sure about that one no I was kind of imagining if someone backfill it a little exactly yeah take or? the space force them even deeper there's a pinch coming through from Victor potentially with this aggression aggression mm. on a and here's the burst again. Orphan instantly going to fight towards Som. Som great dealing with the first though. Front line dealt with. Now you've got to look towards who else is remaining. We know that Koi are play. running as a pack in this. There's three players who are the heavy hitters and they're mostly still standing. Som though yet to be cleared fully from this. Rez comes in. Do they get a partner? Shoot! From Som! Holding it down and giving NRG the finest amount of hope. The thinnest amount to work with as three rounds is really the bare minimum. It's a fine margin. Yeah, the bare minimum. Quietly on the other side of things, Trax has just had an insane half of Valorant here yes, he on has. Icebox for Koi. Just yeah. such yeah. a consistent player. I'm sure I'm into this. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? <laughs> they line up for him. <laughs> you can see a little bit of uh, a little bit of joy to close out the half for NRG. They the consolation, that. at least, definitely needed that one. Yeah, might bring him back a little here. Give him a little bit of that fire burning in the belly because they definitely need a wake-up call. It's three to nine. The chest cracked a smile. <laughs> First time in a while. First time in a while. But yeah, this has to be a rude awakening for NRG. It's do or die. Bear in mind, this is still their map choice. They've got three rounds. Let's hand it back to the desk. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypog. If you're an EMEA fan, you're having a great time. And we heard in the interview uh, before the match started, Shadow said they had one month to prepare for this. And Mimi, this looks great for one month. It looks really well put together by Koi. And I was particularly impressed with just the half that Cole Dementa was calling there. And one piece of that was kind of a piece of tech that I don't think I've really seen before on this map. And that was Wolfen's Jet consistently oh. taking that control in mid and, and breaking the turret. We have a clip to take a look at of one of those rounds here, where as you can see, right off of the rip. Well, we don't have it quite in here, but at the beginning, trust me guys, that <laughs> turret was broken down by Wolf and updrafting on top of that tube. And in the late round, that meant that Finesse had to consistently be that guy, and here it is right now, who was locking things down, playing in mid. Normally when you play that Killjoy, you can kind of set and forget. Set up that utility, stay in range, and you have that information. But Koi consistently denied that, meaning that for the side of NRG, they had to kind of constantly change how they were playing their defense. And when they were calling so well, it was pretty tough for NRG. Yeah, it was just all Koi in that half. But, you know, going into the next half as well, uh, Shados uh, was a uh, on his debut on Killjoy, and Achilles, the guy on the other side, has played a lot of Killjoy. Yeah, this has been a pretty brutal, and unfortunately for, for Finesse, we're going to put them side by side. Shados has had a whale of a time. Round three already had the lockdown. They did have to, have to commit it to be able to get that bonus conversion, but they made it work. They've been running away with it, and that's as an attacking Killjoy. Shados has been popping off for this debut pick, and for Finesse, we've been seeing, as, as Hypok called it, some desperate plays being made here, some desperate calls being made for this team that look very shaken up, especially in those first few rounds. I mean, it took until round 10 to even get an off into Artis's hands. That's something that you want to do as quickly as possible, and having to delay that until 10 is brutal. So we need to see a big step up here for Finesse. He needs to have a Shadoss-esque performance as he gets ready to go on this attack. He absolutely does. At an international event, this is the first time that this NRG core ever has picked this map, so we got to see what they were cooking. Yeah, they got the Night 3 curse, the EU team curse, the first match curse. Everything is against NRG right now, but Pansy and Hypox, they do have a chance to pull this back.
You're absolutely right, Yinzu. Uh, there's every opportunity here, but we did say this is the bare minimum. We said three is really the buffer you're going to need. We have to put into context, you still have Trex having a very big game and Shados to boot. Well, this is the thing as well. Yes, that there's no comfort in the scoreline, right? No. But there's also not a lot of comfort coming out of that half either. In terms of individual performances, it's never nice to drill down to that sort of level. When we're looking at the numbers, thank God Som closes out that half in the way that he did. So there's a Hero. couple of times there, there were fumbles left, right and center for NRG. That has to be cleaned up here for the second half. And if I'm coy, I'm testing them. I'm going right back into the thick of it. And well, for starters, they are getting dealt with. Good Four minutes. <laughs> yeah, they're very aware that this confidence could be happening, and it is. So Starzo going to back away here. You can see them willing to fight on this, spotting them crossing towards the A site, though. So already going to have at least two bodies here. We're going to see a little bit of the setup in play. FNS, though, trying to lead by example at this point here. Early intention showed here as well for Wolfen. Happy to take these opening engagements and Koi happy to build around him. So he's got the clean plant here and still five standing here for NRG. It's a numbers advantage. Koi have to get something done on this retake. We're all going to burn up a lot of time here as yeah. well, Lauren. I don't see a, a comfy way back in at all. They already have to back away from this. There's, there's no step to it. There's still so many bodies on the site. Five still standing for NRG. The ball's only just coming down now. There's only one chunk removed. Okay, Shade also does connect quite quickly. Good information on the second, but not going to follow up. It's Som dealing with it at the back of the site. Art is still standing, and NRG locking this down. They need this one to work out for them, and Trex cannot do enough. Three alive for NRG, and the first in the second half. A great response from NRG as well. Soon as Wolfen falls, they drift back. They're happy to try and fight the remnants of that early attempt from Koi and slot themselves right onto A site. Like I said, that wall just bought so much time. Really nice. Felt like a good 15, 20 seconds until finally a chunk was removed. I'd love to see that. And it is going to be a uh, process here because we can't really, when we look at NRG, you don't have that icebox knowledge to depend upon when you come to that core three, even to an extent. You know, you wonder what they're going to look like on this and. Again, get to at least determine the pace this time, but Koi still looking to test the waters, and why not? They are on to the classics, the frenzy, and just a touch of utility around it, but not a great deal. So just testing the waters and some on the case. I'm so happy with Wolfen, though, and this is in a comp that doesn't actually have a flash, right? There's yeah. no stun, there's no flash. It's only really Trex's utility to really support him, but mm. in my eyes, he's absolutely delivered so far. Very Let's well. see what he can get done in the second half as well. Early intention shown from Koi once again with that tube walk. The dark goes through. Let's see, on the back of that. So proactive. They're coming back. They're clearing this space outside A site. And this is on a round with just classics to work with. And here we go. There's going to be the spot. Crashy's notes. At least one. Potentially two now. So they should be very aware that there's now going to be further presence. A little messy <laughs> in the end. Not what you want, but they should be fine now. Going to lose out on Victor, but I out, Trex will get and thing. Yeah, so comfy, four alive, one coming in. NRG building back into this game. Yeah, and they come into the next round as well. I we'll have to see exactly how it lands, but with a Vandal to work with in the hands of Ardis, that bulldog for some. Let's see actually what's going to round this purchase out. Crash is one away from the Hunter's Fury. The potential to get that online in this round. Quite definitely with the upper hand here. But a big question arises now. How many different looks will we see from this proactivity on the side of Koi? Again, you got to credit the protocols once again for Cold Men to that. So proactive to clear through A side. They don't want NRG to get away with any free space. So if we see that continue into the buy rounds now. Now they walk down tube here, it's it's three towards A side instead, Lauren. Yeah, and gotta say, Shados is in a world of danger. Um, hyper isolated. Uh, even the rotation through mid can be noted, can be seen, can be punished. I don't know how much he can do on yeah, his own here. Starzo's behind this turret as well, so FNS deals with it. He should be able to lock down at least one side. Either the kitchen rotate or under tube at least. Really? Yeah, this... I mean, if Shadoff lives, then yeah, sure, but... Uh, Didn't love this. What is that no second swing. I mean, no. Starzo is trying to follow off the drone. Som's going to find another kill on Takoda Menti here. Uh, nicely played round so far by NRG, but it is been left on a platter here. Um, Shados, Wolfen, and Trex trying to navigate a way through, and Som can play that back line. 
Oh, there's yet to be checked on. Does do well. Finds Wolfen. Extends a little bit of play here. 3v2. And Som, perfect timing. Lovely approach there. Buys a little couple of seconds as well. Going to be a nuisance. And Shados not being given a fair fight. There isn't one to be had. Turns the flash, but he can't turn this round any other way. And I didn't love what they were doing there. It was a little bit of a heavy investment towards the ace tight. But again, there was no fallback plan. I mean, I love it from FNS. Uh, yeah, they're showing tube presence. Uh, I'm going to walk tube this round. A bit, and like I said, it's, it's the fact that Starzo is behind that turret, the other side of it, that just makes it so uneasy for Shados. You, you can kind of trade that off if they get deep mid control, they get deep A side yeah, control, somewhere else. somewhere else. But as soon as you get stuck behind that turret, Shados is left in a world of hurt. And there's no, I mean, what's he can, what can he do there? Pop off, find three kills? That's the only solution to that. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if there was maybe a, not a misread, but maybe a gamble towards it, maybe testing things out, I don't know. But again, it's put them in a position where they are back down to the pistols here. So this will build, again, an opportunity for NRG to close the gap. And they're still stuck on nine for Koi. NRG just spilling that confidence as well, trying to feel out the game, warm into this a little bit. They certainly need a bit of that. Maybe some Eco Cobra frags for Ardis can help the matter too. Momentum should get spotted here, yeah. Noted at least from Ardis. I think actually noted the second player as well. Starzo unnoted as of yet. The spike not committed. A little bit of a poke here from NRG and they do have the space to rotate. Already though, Koi. They have a read on this as well. Only really the frenzy in the hands of Shados to work with. As it stands, NRG is still stuck oh, towards B-Long, very methodically working. They do still have utility to clear towards site as well. Seconds. But it's the time. It makes me nervous, even against these pistols. One player drops, Spike gets lost, Util gets burnt up. 25 seconds now. Mike, this is running down to the wire. Som trying to do his heroics Thank once you. again. Wall goes up. 18 seconds. I'm still waiting for that plant to come in and if it's safe. It is for now. Victor and Som on the case. All right, and Som actually the one to find that crucial kill to open things up and closes out with three for the Prime Gaming Flawless. And a little more confidence in their step now for NRG. Mm. Som actually leading the charge here, 17 and 9. Top of the scoreboard for them. And this ultimately is the buy round that gets them back to a tight scoreline in my eyes. Got to say, yeah, actually, maybe game. behind this purchase here, yeah, I mean, other than the operator purchase, yeah. Wolfing one off the Blade Storm, there's a chance to scrape together maybe some rifles in the next. This is a big one for NRG, actually. Potential to get everything online in terms of this ult cycle. But Hunter's Fury and the Viper's bit available in this round for Crashies and Som. They're implying pressure in middle as well. You've just seen the Aldrin go through, and Wolfen's waiting with that operator. One of the young guns to watch if you are keeping track of EMEA. Didn't expect to really see him here, but let's see how he does with Operator now in hand. It's a big jump to come here to this stage, and I mean, I've already said That's it delivered big. in my eyes in that first half. Yeah, very much like a technical player so far. He's not, as I said, not going to be your highlight player. He's not going to be sitting there top of the scoreboard, but he's certainly doing the damage. Lovely work. Big connection towards Victor. That's now a little bit of a problem. You're going to isolate FNS if he tries to stick around here. He can't do much more. It's down to the three. They're hitting towards the site. Crash is an artist, though. Look at them. To find Starzo, trying to navigate around potentially. Starzo yet to get checked on, and Trex has found Crashies. This is a bit bizarre to me, and Starzo can just back away here, gets away with his life. No success being found. So FNS, yes, has gone deep towards A, but to what value? There's still utility in play here. Just now dealing with the turret. The alarm boss still there, so Shadows is going to know nobody's followed through on that. Som, how much can this one man do? This again is calling for such a huge round, and he's actually in the right place for it. Going to fight Cordamenta. There is a second on the site as well, but it's going to be Starkso just worming his way around, trying to find the angle. He gets it, Koi! Huge punish. Denying Som, denying Artis, and they noted earlier yep. where FNS was. They are going to sit on this one. The smokes are coming in. Starzo is safe, and it's 10 for Koi. Great response here in this round, but uh, NRG creeping all the way up onto B-side. I think it's only that recon from Trex that gives that away. It almost felt like Crash has had a free clearance with that Viper Wall being yes. up, and yeah. Starzo hyper-focused towards B-main. Got away with murder there, i got to say it. Yeah, I'm not sure actually who was in a position to deal with that, <laughs> that dart. 
I love seeing Bar Bar Camp again, by the way. It's like, <laughs> I miss Bar Bar Camp. <laughs> Great to see it. But yeah, it's, it's only that recon that gives things away. It's a great timing from Trex to, to really bail Starzo out in that regard. But the only ultimate missing now for NRG, the lockdown. So a decent financial position behind this, and looks like they might try and commit behind this null command. Shados okay. here, so most of his utility will be rendered useless. Should be a clean plant here. Oh. Viper's bit gonna go up now. Ooh, hold on. Response coming through from Trex here. One tag at least, I noted, but... Heading away Actually, with no it. tag. It looked no. like he did get a tag onto Ardis there, but... They have invested so much in this, but two players on the flank now, but two players to be watching it as well. So NRG fully aware. Free really, round. really Literally diligent. Unlosable round here. Hunter's Fury, two snake bites available. Nano Swarms, Koi know it. As soon as those two flank kills fall. A great decision to be made here from Koi as well. And Coldham enter 2800, Starzo 800. Opportunity here for a weapon to be passed across. Like I said, that all hinged on those two kills on the flank, Lauren. Yeah, it could have changed the outcome if they did potentially go the other way, but NRG pulling out the must win round sort of deal. Burnt a fair amount, but absolutely worth it at this point, it feels. So going to convert here and close the gap on the scoreline just a touch. Not letting Koi oh. run away and a little bit of a hunt for the I rifles. Say, up, I was going to say Wolfen okay. up on top of the hut there, back in spawn, almost getting spotted out. He did have mm. the operator in hand, obviously carries it across now. Fair investment here, but it's, it's the null command and the Viper's pit That's done. Down. to get this round done. That's done. Is great awareness for FNS and crashes just to be double stacked up here that. to secure that. Just knowing where that weakness would be, because you've invested well, so much on it. what the wing condition it. is. Yeah, yeah exactly. The wing condition is the post plant there. Beautiful, beautifully done. We go back in though, and again, Koi's money will be brought into question. They are starting to dip a little lower into the funds, and the, you know, the score line's getting a bit closer here. Slowly, NRG waking up in this game, and Trex willing to scrap on this. Does need to back away, he had the support there as well. Wolfen getting a little bit of play into this timing. Not there this time, and NRG quick to it. They are not cool. resting for a second, Victor! Fast as anything, you'd think he's on Neon if you blinked and missed it. But it's Wolfen in the back lines. They've had to relinquish the site control. But I am looking at one going walkabouts here. Drex is still on the site. Finally found by Crashies for the spike yet to be planted. But NRG are winning the fight, so they desperately needed. Well, this is the sort of round they're known for. Completely disrupting the rhythm, the tempo, the expectations of some of these rounds. And Koi just left scratching their heads, honestly. Massively overstepping the mark. You don't ever expect anybody on the back of that initial contact. And that's Koi being aggressive there. They're the Still. ones that are happy to dig a little deeper, challenge that Al drone. But straight away, Victor barrels towards site. I love seeing that from Victor, though. We need we needed a bit of that punch to come back in. We saw a little bit of that dabble of aggression on the first half. It didn't obviously work out as well for NRG, but to see them kindling that here in the second half I'm is great. I'm glad you referenced the Neon as well, because actually, whatever composition we see him, it, it becomes Victor and Crashies being the key stakeholders, yes. right? Those are yes. the playmakers. Yes, they're missing Yay now. Sure. But in my eyes, Victor and Crashies are two that actually, when they excel, those games for Optic look so easy. Absolutely. When, they're, when they're just in like hard carry mode. Yeah, it's gorgeous to watch. It's, it's very stylistic to only what I feel like they can do as well. And look at this. Rapid on the hunt. Takes so much space. Continuing to pressure and you're right. Crashies in combination as well. Beautiful synergy there. Loving that. Going to put a little bit more pressure back towards Koi now. Somehow, Nine to ten. somehow, we're one round Perfect. This away from a tied scoreline. But this is the beauty of single limb as well. Like, it, this one map can mean so much here. And NRG having to dig deep early on. Now, the money did get shattered. We saw it was very fragile, even just the prior round for Koi. So this is poised to be 10-10, Mike. It's actually a, a comfortable amount of credits. Sorry, just tighten up the numbers, but yeah, yeah. Wolfen's going to be able to have the operator. Even here, it's, it's 2200, 2800 to carry across. Decent progression on this old cycle as well. Coldham enter and Shados, one away from two very impactful defensive ultimates. Flip side, yes. Could argue there's a couple of counters there, but. I say we came into this half with, yes, the odds stacked against NRG, but even here you come into the next, it's tied up. Mm. I mean, a loss isn't going to break them, but no. still, Koi in a pretty good position. 
Yeah, certainly the purchase will be coming back around, but yeah, they really need to show their diligence here as well for NLG. Don't be walking into stacks or any funny business. A lot of the time being purchased, Wolfen unable to find the connection he wanted. Wolfen and Shados breaking their ankles there. And the side looks like it's on a platter. Do they try and refight? Do they offset the timing? It looks like they try too hard. It's so willing to brawl it out. Crash! He denies. And none of that pressure. None of that aggression going to work out here, trying to offset the tempo to try and maybe deny that plan and get in their faces. Cold Mental left alive, and it's a formality at this point. It will be tied up. This will be 10 10. And I'd love to see you prove me wrong, Cold Mental, but <laughs> it ain't going to happen. More and more examples of that main stage confidence coming out from some of these NRG players. They need it. They yep. needed it. Called upon it when it was most required. Three rounds in the first half, and bear in mind, one of them was a gift from some. This, this is pedigree coming in. This is that core three that we need to be looking at, and then the, you know, the additions coming through as well. This is exactly what the doctor prescribed, and they are absolutely doing as needed. Problem being, though, again, I was crediting that financial position for Koi behind that previous. They're going to come in four players sitting 1,200 and above. I mean, NRG can basically buy out even if Koi do string together a couple yeah. here, find themselves towards that 12 round mark. I think you think as you dig a little deeper and NRG, if they do rely back on some of these ultimates. Oh, I can't actually believe we're even here to start off with. And then you look at this scoreboard and there's mm -hmm. so many factors to consider. Yeah. Where's, where, where do your eyes go to instantaneously now? Coming into 10-10, right? Tied up. Where are we watching? Tell, tell me where I need to be looking. Dare I say in. it? Coming out this time out, I want to see Koi start exploring the map again. Oh, uh, get back to the aggression. Yeah, just a little get, bit. get Take back space. to being a little proactive. Because yep. that's the thing that Cold Mentor is so good at doing. Okay. Dictating that mid round, being proactive, clearing space, and then being in a position to have kind of a, a, a numbers favorable mm. defense on one of the sites. Again, it's 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 a big ask. When this half has gone the way it has. They've had one round in the second. Yes. I'm not seeing it again. initially here. Nope. Adjustment, yes. Shade us over towards B. Well, maybe actually with Ooh. this tube walk, we might even see it. Is this what we've been asking for? Wolfen could have that opportunity. He did manage to find, I believe it was actually Victor even last time, but a new position and playing off the back of the turret as well. It's a sketchy res. Starzo has to respect it for the time being. Has to back away from that. And Might I, even have to wait for, for the retake opportunity to get that res back online. And I feel like this is a fantastic read because we did see that before. That walk down tube only used once or twice, very rarely oh, yeah. implemented. Uh, FNS with his finger on the pulse in terms of what Koi were planning to pull out in this round. God, this is so much pressure now. Yeah, Crash has actually offs. confirmed the information that actually Starzo isn't tucked into tube waiting for that res. And they're going to police it as well. Look at this. Yep. Bodies on the death marker. I love it. Shados is sweating bullets here. Because <laughs> there's a big so gap alone. in kitchen. Yeah. Big gap in they kitchen. They could be anywhere. They, the, the information is so deep by the time they'll be on the site. And again, yes, they've cleared this far. So he, this adds to that pressure on this man here, Shados. How much can he do? Does he get checked on? When does he get checked on? Because they're still watching this flank fight. Big there positive. is still yep. information free flowing. So Shados, again, that time, he's got even longer on his own. This is the thing, though. NRG have a long list of options in terms of the plant spot. Victor actually set like oh, a default here. I love this. Going back in just to ensure that that res does not come through and Som is putting in serious work. Shados finally pulls the trigger. Takes down one on the site. Som's been found. It's a 3v3. But time, the KJ ult has come into effect. And Ardis is going to get the counter ult comes in. Starzo on the punish. And now just two. FNS and Victor, and where do they go? Got to back away. Koi actually respecting the lockdown as well. Nothing detained here on either side. Time. they got to get a move it's on Victor. It's up so much. He's going to have his knife back. He's going to have his flashback. He's got so much kit still to play with. Shadow's still alive. FNS is there. He can get back onto this one. Oh, and Victor's found Sarzo. Shadow's with a quick trade, but time is everything. And he's running out for them. FNS, he he's got to in time. It's done for. It's 11 for NRG. What a round for NRG to pull out here. Absolute chaos, everybody. I mean, everything but the kitchen sink thrown at thrown this in. round. But it's such a perfect read on both sides of this. That was beautiful. The clearance from NRG behind that res, and then Sob well. posts up another. Just such an impactful round from him. And even though he falls here, like I said, both so much. lockdowns come through, and all the time is expired.
I mean, I think Trex has to full stick this. You I, can't fault him here. No, it's, no. it's a high pressure scenario. There's no right choice in no. that, really. It's you make the best of what you've been given, and you. Oh, the heartbreak on Barbar. He knows that round could have been just uh, the minuscule differences coming into play here. And now NRG finally in the lead. But like I said, though, Koi still had enough behind that purchase to string together rifles here. You're right. You're Cold right. with the Viper's Pit. Some sense of security towards a site here. But the rest of Corey actually scratching so their heads deep. in mid yeah. right now. NRG actually feel, they I guess like they, f they found a, a weak point in this defense. This time around the turret is there, Shados. I, I wouldn't call that weak with Shados on it now. No. Flash is enough. There's contact found, slips away, does call for help, but no one's going to be there super quick. Yes, Trex does actually jump Big really kill. well. This is a little bit of an adjustment. Trex coming in to bail out is massive. Now they can start working this down. They would have at least noted three now, noting it all. That's the spike lost, and Koi crunched them in towards Kitchen. And you can have Vanessa and Crashies, irrelevant to outcome. Crashies would have to pull off miracles here. And he's got the first step. 35 seconds, finds the second. Crashies is fighting as best he can for being closed in on. And now <laughs> Wolfen springs into effect. We're tied up again, 11-11. Just when you think NRG are going to find themselves a bit of space once again. How's the money? How's the money looking, though, Mike? Is it? Is it... NRG should still be comfortable. NRG I mean, are fine. I'm looking at Koi. I mean, it's going to be tough. It's going to be an SMG or a judge to yeah. throw through here to round out this purchase. But even on the other side of things, I'm seeing Ardis down to 350 credits. What a game. What a game. I bloody missed Valorant. <laughs> what a way to start the day as well. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at that first half and you're thinking, well, uh, I mean, this is the Koi that's shown up today. The second half. There's NRG right back at him. All the things we look for, things we like, you know, that kind of like crashies, Victor, look coming in, FNS with some hot calls coming out as well. Som being such a really nice technical player as well. Some of the looks he's been doing, some of those positions he's I been mean, playing out of. Som, and, Som and Trex, this map, have just had like uh, mm -hmm. some of the craziest rounds individually. In my mind, Trex changed how that last round went. That one pick, who I think it was on Victor. To bail Shados out, yeah. Shados would have been dead otherwise. And we've seen Shados on an island so often. And it's certainly no holiday here. 11-11, this is now. This is when your IGLs, this is when your coaches. <laughs> this is another reason that this matchup is so fascinating. It's Cole Mentor and FNS, two Brilliant very mind. storied, yes, exactly. And storied IGLs within Valorant facing off here with Blank canvas, right? Coming into this, this, yes. this is completely blank canvas. God, what a dream game already. I'm loving this. And I know some fans will be like, oh, you know, NRG, such a close game against a team like Koi. Look at the caliber that Koi has, though. Really take it in. We go again. 11-11 could not be closer. What Mike, what do we see? What is that line up? All the way towards back kitchen, but no command popped over towards a site here. Four players here so early on. We're not expect series. this resistance. Starzo going to find Victor, trade comes in, the site is Manic, but it's Crashies again! The pen Crashies. stage from Crashies! Animal on the site, finding three critical kills. Drex, heroics again, required, not going to happen. The guts on Crashies to play like that, man. It's just another one that defies logic. Come on! How is he up there? And this is the thing, it's always a possibility with players like Crashies and Victor to just have one of those rounds where one it's... One round, yeah. Sovers in Arnest. Why? Why? <laughs> How is he here? Watch it again. And he just keeps going. Oh, gorgeous play. And at such a pivotal time. You could not ask for a better moment. And the it, money will be shattered, it Mike. It breaks the back oh, of Koi's money. No ultimates available. Oh. Touching distance to the res, but NRG in a position to seal the deal on map one here. A yeah, long time since they really explored towards B main in the early round. Knife will clear yellow. Shados once again will be tested. How many times have we said that in the second half? If he can just try and play his life as best he can, yeah, not going to find it. Can't stall the plant. Nope. And there it is. Already a post plant with five alive. You still have Hunter's Fury on Crash. He's got Artis with a res as two well. Two snake bites, two nano swarms. How Victor you gonna do with that? the fragment. You've got to somehow disrupt the back line with this. Come on, this is going to be hard, hard work. First touch on the spike, going to try and draw out the initial utility. There's a little bit of a look, but not too much intention behind it. Som willing to put life on the line for this now. Maybe even first contact once that wall does drop. There it is, say hello. Som says hello to two and bye. 
finally goes down, but it's down to three. Wolfenstars are on Trex. How much more can they do? It's not looking likely. Wolfen, desperate, and desperation ain't working. Starzo now with a judge, and the jury has decided. It's NRG somehow making it to 13. What a brilliant game that was. What an insane comeback. You can never count these guys out. Beautiful. Beautiful game of Valorant there. Again, okay, this is one with actually one of the headline plays here. Oh, this on your screen. And a very quiet map, right? Yes. Uh, a very quiet start, but everybody on the side of NRG. Som, absolutely stepping up to one the plate round. here. Yeah. He, he, that one round. He I feel like off. actually when he closed out that, that well, that 5K that caused yes, the pseudo yes, ace yes. or whatever, after that, it was just from strength to strength for him. He kept going. That's beautiful to see. And, and again, you think morale-wise, getting that another round on the wall, giving that little bit of a break there. Pulling him back into the game because Koi were right at their heels. Kicking and screaming. <laughs> the Kicking double ult. and screaming. That double KJ all round that came down. You saw Barbar afterwards. He knew that could have been the one. That one kill between it. I mean, what an impeccable game. This is the beauty of lock-in, right? And this is the caliber of game we're starting with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, there was some crazy stuff about how many times actually the 9 3 curse comes one. into effect. Yeah. That time. I, I mean, I, I'll be honest, that should have felt like Koi would have been able to close that out, but NRG just exploding into that second half. Uh, again, even from the first two rounds, you can see immediately there's a completely different approach here. Put themselves right back in the driving seat, and unfortunately, uh, a couple of the big positives from that first half for Koi just were absent in the second. Trex continued to deliver in the second, but uh, I mean, I don't want to say Shados had a poor second half, but he was left on an island. He was left in so positions much. where he had to really, really actually go over and above to really deliver. Yeah, now let's put it in context. Let's kind of, you know, talk big game here. This was NRG's choice. So, it was, it was like, yeah, again, <laughs> it's bad. It's like, how many layers do we keep going down on this? But a 13-11, again, I have to give you credit where it's due here. Som to me was a little bit of a stand out in that Trex yeah. standout. If you think about what Som did though, in my mind, he propelled them back into the game. Absolutely, I yeah. think without him doing what he did, I don't think they would have made that comeback. I think actually you see a couple of rounds to build upon that. The rounds where Crashes and Victor are happy to kind of mimic that confidence, right? To build yes. off some of that confidence and string a couple of rounds together is why NRG were able to pull this off. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to the next game. I've got my Haven coming up next, yeah. Mike. Where do you, where, I dare ask you for a prediction now. No, don't. Time to break. No. Is it break time? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's All break right, time. we're getting out of here. We need to go and just take a break because that is map one of this entire tournament. That's only the start of things to come, so I cannot wait for what's coming up next. Gives you wings.